Okay, even further north now. I'm heading into the Scottish Highlands, and I've come here to describe a completely different motivation for the spread of British influence abroad. Not in pursuit of conquest, not in pursuit of commerce, no, this is an altogether more humble and affecting story. And it concerns those many millions of men and women who left these shores in pursuit of a better life. What follows is the story of British emigration. I'm in the Glencoe Gorge, south of Fort William, and I've come here to tell one very tragic story of forced emigration. The thing you notice, obviously, about this landscape is how empty it is. That's part of its rugged glory. But the fact is, this land wasn't always deserted. In the early 19th century, there were hundreds of families, crofters, eking out a living between here and Bridge of Orkey, 30 miles to the south. Every once in a while you come across the ruin of one of their old stone cottages. What happened here, and I'm talking 1830s, 1840s now, was that all of this land was cleared to make way for sheep. Sheep farming needs wide expanses of land. People just get in the way. And all across the Scottish Highlands, from about the 1790s onwards, people were moved off the land by the major landowners and their often brutal agents. And this grim programme of forced relocation is known as the Scottish Clearances. Over 50 years, 100,000 Scottish crofters were hounded off their land. Some survived, eking out a living on the seashore. Others, though, came to believe there was now no future for them in Britain. They looked to the example of so many emigrants from the days of the Mayflower onwards, two centuries of the dispossessed who'd left Britain in search of religious freedom, in search of land, in search of work. And so they made their way to the docks, to Glasgow, to Liverpool, and there they awaited a passage to a new life. Where did they go? Well, they had a choice. By this point in our story, our very first colonies, those in North America, had already split from the empire. The colonists had fought a war of independence. They'd formed the United States. And many of the emigrants arriving here in Liverpool, Scottish crofters, English men and women down on their luck, Irish families mostly escaping a great famine in Ireland, they chose, not surprisingly, to turn their backs on the mother country. They sailed to New York. They took American citizenship. But meanwhile, the British Empire had continued its seemingly unstoppable growth. We'd plugged the gap left by the loss of the American colonies with all kinds of new possessions. Canada would won from the French. Australia and New Zealand would claim simply by turning up and planting a Union Jack. And these new dominions became the favoured destination for tens of thousands of emigrants leaving Britain's shores. The wild expanses were partitioned, fenced off, sold to settlers. Farmers with an acre over here could buy a thousand acres over there. And so it was that crofters uprooted from the highlands made good. They found a new life across the world, and the spread of Britishness continued. One final irony. It's strange sometimes how history repeats itself. We'll try this one for size. Just as this wilderness was home once to a scattered population. So too, the wild expanses of Australia and New Zealand were home to tribal peoples, the Aborigines, the Maori. Well, the crofters here were moved off the land to make way for sheep. They traveled to the other side of the world. Many of them prospered. And they moved the Aborigines and Maori off the land to make way for sheep. <laughs> 